And joining us now to further discuss the recent international pressures is Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem, Flor Hassan Nahum. Hi, Flor. There is surmounting international pressure for countries to resume the funding to UNRWA, especially in light of the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. Will most countries cave and resume funding, perhaps even before UN internal investigation results are in? Well, first of all, I don't have a lot of hopes for UN internal investigations because UNRWA is a corrupt body with lots of different financial and sexual scandals over the last few years, and no internal investigation ever came to any good in the UN. UN is a body that is very bad at policing itself. So I'm not sure I have much hope for that, but what people don't seem to understand is that UNRWA doesn't do humanitarian assistance well. That's really never, it was never really its purpose. And and the truth is, you can see it every day, they are not delivering. They cannot actually literally deliver the goods. They have got too much Hamas members and presence in their organization. And 60 to 80 percent of the aid is being stolen by Hamas. We've seen the scenes. It's actually kind of pathetic. So why do people want to renew money to UNRWA when it's very clear that they cannot deliver the humanitarian assistance? I really don't know. What could be the implications of these nations resuming funds to UNRWA? Israel has certainly said time and again that UNRWA cannot continue to exist in Gaza and that it must be switched. Well, first of all, I think we have to lead by example. We still have an UNRWA office headquarters here in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, there's five UNRWA schools teaching this curriculum of hatred that I've been talking about for many, many years. And so if we want the rest of the world to defund UNRWA and dismantle UNRWA, why don't we start here at home? Hmm. If UNRWA is dismantled, who can replace them? There's many different humanitarian organizations. There's no UNRWA in Africa. And yet when people need uh, all sorts of humanitarian assistance, there's other international bodies. There's the World Food Organization. There's the World Health Organization. There's many different players that can come into place. Look, we've even seen that the American uh, military was aid dropping from the sky because that seemed to be more efficient than an actual human so-called humanitarian organization in Gaza. And so I'm not concerned because there's never really a vacuum. Once you actually decide that UNRWA is not fit for purpose, that UNRWA cannot deliver the humanitarian aid and everything they've been doing is essentially stoking the conflict rather than resolving the conflict, I'm sure there will be many good faith players who can come into place to deliver that humanitarian assistance. Now, it does seem that the United States, the UK, and many other European countries are very concerned about the issue of humanitarian aid. We're seeing just this week, just as you mentioned, a couple of American airdrops of aid into Gaza. Is Israel running out of time in its campaign against Hamas in Gaza? Will it eventually succumb to this kind of international pressure sooner rather than later? Absolutely not. I think the pressure at the moment is the cutoff of Sunday, which is the beginning of Ramadan, Sunday evening. And I think that's the international pressure. But even President Biden said two days ago, Hamas were presented a very reasonable offer for a deal and a ceasefire for the return of the hostages. And the ball is in their court at the moment. If they are not wanting to accept that deal, they're the ones that want to perpetuate this war. And so the onus really should be on them. Israel has made a very good, a very good offer of a deal uh, to stop the the uh, the offense for a number of months in order to get our hostages back and we need hamas to accept that but if they don't israel is going to on sunday actually continue in full force until we rescue our hostages if they can't make a deal for the hostages and so with israel going ahead with their plans in gaza and this deal apparently falling apart do you think the international community will turn against israel well, I'm, I'm not sure the international community has been with Israel. Some countries have, of course, and some countries haven't. And at the end of the day, we cannot live in an island. We do need international support. But more than that, we need to dismantle the existential threat to the state of Israel. That is our goal. We need to return our hostages every day that goes by. Their lives get more dangerous and precarious. And so if we have to go it alone, we will go it alone. But we have to actually you know, create the situation where the war ends and Hamas is dismantled and nothing else is good enough. They started this war 
they wanted this war, we didn't. But we will finish this war as we have won and finished every single war that has been started against Israel since 1948. And on that note, Flor, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.